actually printed her bio, but I'd like to speak from the heart. Um, here it is. There you go. But I'm going to speak from the heart anyway. How about that? Uh, Reverend Christine Grace is an ordained unity minister, and for those of you who don't know, she really planted a lot of love here in our family. Is that not true? She's passionate about being of service for love in all ways, everywhere she goes, and being a minister for love. She has a degree in spiritual psychology with an emphasis on consciousness, health, and healing from the University of Santa Monica, and she has served the University of Chattanooga and our own spiritual family of, the Unity, in Birmingham, of Unity in Birmingham. She's featured as a Unity speaker on the New Thought Channel, speaking on a variety of topics as spiritual principles and creative process, magic, M-A-G-I-C, and more. And as a speaker, she truly enjoys connecting and inspiring her audiences. And of course, we're not only her audience, but we're an extension of her family. Would you please give a round welcome to our beloved Christine Grace. Thank you. All right. Why don't we all stand up? We're going to have wonderful Erica Ashley one more time here. Uh, and why don't we all stand up and we're going to sing I Release. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself. Did it know the grace of God was sufficient? Did it know the love of God was in hand? But now I can say if you are discouraged service when you can say hello to a neighbor, uh, maybe try to say hello to somebody new. for singing we're gonna stay standing and we're gonna do uh, one that maybe you guys have done in a lot of different settings this is open the eyes of my heart so one, two, oh, 
service for inner inspection for turning within and tuning into that divine wisdom so I invite you to sit back and relax and do whatever you need to do to be comfortable in this space as we take a few deep cleansing breaths centering ourselves within ourselves I invite you to close your outer eyes or softly Soften your gaze as we turn within, allowing the breath of the Holy Spirit to breathe us, taking a nice, deep, cleansing breath, each at our own pace, perhaps feeling the ground beneath your feet and the chair beneath you in the loving support. as we settle within ourselves, knowing that this divine moment is meant for each of us, calling our presence forth, allowing ourselves to settle a little bit more, stilling ourselves in this beautiful, quiet spaciousness within, knowing that Everything truly is in divine order. As we allow the breath to breathe us, 
opening our hearts and our minds so that we may see as love, through love, from love, in love, as we may see as the divine sees the one power and one presence in all the universe, animating each and every one of us. We open ourselves up. As we tune within and listen to that divine voice that calls to each and every one of us in our unique way. There are infinite paths to oneness. And wherever each one of us is, is perfect, whole, and complete in this now moment, for there is no other than this. I invite you to enter into that sacred space within and listen deeply in the silence, allowing our thoughts to simply come and go like the clouds in a clear blue sky. The sky remains, the clouds pass. Unattached, we simply sit in the silence and listen. As we allow ourselves to move in and through the silence, we become more familiar with the spaciousness where true wisdom lies, beyond lies, beyond the veils. Accessible always in all ways, as we simply choose to listen, to be guided and allow the divine presence to live us. As we move forward today with open eyes and open hearts, may we truly know something different. May we continue to empty ourselves so that we may truly live truth and prosper, one and all. For this and so much more, we humbly say, thank you, thank you, thank you, God, and the infinite names we have for God. We say thank you. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look and you'll see into your imagination. We'll begin with a spin, traveling in a world of my creation. What we'll see will define. 
justify explanation If you want to view paradise Simply look around and view it Anything you want to do it Want to change the world There's nothing to it There is no life I know Compare with pure imagination Living there you'll be free If you truly wish to be I simply have to begin by saying thank you to this amazing band. I mean, really. Uh, you guys are the most perfect example of asking for what you want, and then they do it. And, you know, what would really round this off right now, and Jamie will understand this, does anybody have dark chocolate? Because, I mean, right, Willy Wonka? Oh, how can you not? I invite you to turn to your neighbor and say, welcome to paradise. <laughs> welcome to paradise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the walls came tumbling down. Yeah. I invite you right now with that statement and the walls come tumbling down. Take a moment and ask yourself what that means for you right now. Not yesterday and not tomorrow, but right now. What does that mean for you? And if you're willing, I would love it if you would just shout out what that means to you right now in your life, and the walls come tumbling down. Anybody? Mm -hmm. Walls of the past, limitation. Perfect health. Freedom. Woo, my favorite. All your stories come tumbling down. Yes. Anybody else? Fear. Yes. Woo. Expectations. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Anger. Anger. Hatred. Hatred. Yeah. Division. Division. Control. Control. Fear. Fear. I'm sure there are many more and that we can all relate on some level to all of these ideas and words. When I came out of a meditation after I was invited to come here for two Sundays, the first sentence that came out of my mouth that I, in my writing was, and the walls came tumbling down. And of course I said, God, you're so funny, I love that. That's a good one. <laughs> and 
The second after that was June 23rd, and the title for that, God, what's next? We can, we can use this stuff anytime, anywhere, with anything or anyone. It always works if you work it. We can only each share from our own personal experiences in life. But how awesome it is when we gather together like this in the sharing of ideas and then we're able to talk about them. I went to Jamie's class before the service 930. I mean, if anybody hasn't been to the adult ed classes, I highly, highly recommend it. It was a beautiful circle of goodness on the third agreement from the four agreements. I love the four agreements, and this one was not making assumptions. But what a beautiful circle, Jamie. You do such a beautiful job of creating such a sacred space for people to come and share. That's what we are about, coming together. I don't care how or where or when, but gathering two, where two or more are gathered. That's all it takes. And you don't have to rely on somebody else because that two or more can happen right here. Right here. There is nothing out there. It comes from what is in here. So when I look out and see each of you and know, yes, you two are me. I am you. I am one with you. That is what we're talking about. That's what the spiritual teachers and mystics from ancient times all the way up until now have said. That it is about oneness and love and coming together and just connect. And we have to allow the walls to fall and dissolve But don't go chasing after the walls or trying to dismantle them and trying to dissolve them. What happens when we do that? We actually build more walls. Because what are we doing? It's the law of attraction. Try to take it down. We're making it wrong. There's nothing wrong with anything. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be so that we can create something new. I know that's counterintuitive sometimes. What? Take my attention off what's wrong? But I got to dismantle it. Come home. Right here. This is where all the power is. Right here. This is where the work is done so that the walls dissolve. The veils are gone. There's nothing standing in the way except for what I allow to stand in the way. Once we start waking up, it is our duty and responsibility to use the tools to the best of our ability to unhook and dismantle and dissolve and let go. I release and I let go. However many times we have to do it. And true forgiveness starts here. I cannot get forgiveness from anybody else. And in love, we don't even need forgiveness. We don't. But it's a tool. So forgiveness is a tool, but we've got to apply it. And so if I'm looking for validation out there, you know what, I can make my amends to you, and you might not absolve me of my sins. I have to be at peace myself. Lao Tzu said, if we are depressed, and I would add lots of words in there, but here's a you know umbrella word. If we are depressed, we're living in the past. If we are anxious, we're living in the future. The only place of peace is in the present, right here. So when we wake up and say it's a new day, And then our next step or our next thought or the next idea is, "Ah, 
But what about yesterday and what if that repeats? If I don't catch myself, I'm going to go down that rabbit hole into nothingness. It's an abyss of darkness. I've been there. And it can happen in any moment. But the key is, do like a pattern interrupt. Right now, everybody sitting here right now has something, no matter what. If you were to just say, you know, she's full of it, and you walk away right now, you can take something away with you. What does pattern interrupt mean to me? Huh, how can I use that in my life? The next time I run into somebody and want to tell them off. You see, I, I love this time I was sitting in a room and Jesus was given a sermon. And it was just a three-word sermon. He said, this can be probably the shortest sermon you've ever heard. Jesus is standing up there, master teacher that he is, and said, here's my sermon, y'all. Love your neighbor. And so this guy in the back raises his hand, and he said, uh, I have a question, Jesus. And Jesus said, bring it. <laughs> and the guy said, well, what if my neighbor is irritating or annoying? <laughs> and this is what Jesus said from pure love, you know? Jesus just said, did I stutter? <laughs> Like, what did you not get about love your neighbor? But what, uh, 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 what if and ah, uh, love your neighbor? It becomes more clear, though, how to love our neighbor when we're able to love ourselves. And that's why all these words that we threw out there, fear and hatred and divisiveness and forgiveness and expectations and all of that, ideas of wrongdoing and making others wrong and blame and shame and all of that, all of it, can only be dissolved within each of us. And so the cool thing about that is we hold the keys to the kingdom. And I truly believe as we each, as individuals, allow the walls in our own consciousness, the ones that we have allowed to be built because of experiences that are real, yes, they have been real. And they do not have to live our life for the rest of our lives. Because otherwise, we're just a bunch of hurt people hurting people. And hurt, you hurt people hurt people. And then the person that feels innocent and they get hurt, then they're hurt, and then they go ahead and hurt someone else. And we were talking about that in class today. If, if I take something you say and I perceive it and I make an assumption that you don't like me, and then I go ahead and I answer somebody else's question that comes up to me all innocently and I've got an attitude because of where I just came from, making up some stuff that isn't good, I'm going to come to you with an attitude. And then, ah, da, 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 da. ripple effect, right? It just happens. But we are at a place that is so important, so powerful, so beautiful, that we can create a world that works for all, a world more beautiful than we have ever imagined. And the thing is, I love the power of imagination. I think it is the most awesome power that we have. But where do we come off saying that I'm broken, I'm damaged, I'm defective, I'm lacking, I'm not enough? When we sit and say and we hear these wise statements that tell us that we are made in the image and the likeness of the one power and one presence in all the universe, and that is good. I call it good. So if we're going to use this power of our imagination, let's use it for our good to imagine the world that we want to see. And so I have this poster board up here because one of my all-time favorite things in Unity is the creative process. I mean, this just, oh God, I could do a happy dance right now. I think I will. 
oh my god it, it just is so exciting the creative process because who's ever had an idea like boom light bulb goes off yes anybody nobody's had an idea okay raise your hand everyone you've had an idea an idea whose time has come is now and so tell me something think about a divine idea you have had and then tell me what you did with it. Please, no editing. Felt joy. Felt joy. Anybody feel fear? What? Holy what? I can't do that. That's too much. What? Maybe another time. Let me get all my ducks in a row first. Jeez, there's got to be another step to this before just this divine idea. Like, what am I supposed to do with this divine idea, God? first step of the creative process is that illuminated mind, the divine idea. And I've always said that there is preparation, you guys, to get to that first step, the divine idea. Because if we're not clearing all the poo that came before this moment, we might not pay attention to that divine idea. Because we want to put it back there and say when if yeah okay maybe sounds great something i've always wanted but not yet and that's okay if we're aware of it and we could say what do i need to clear that's in the way so that this divine idea that was given to me i can use it for my good and so some call it luck, and I say luck is simply where preparation meets opportunity. That's all it is. You know that saying, in the right place at the right time? We're always in the right place at the right time, unless we make it wrong. And who's doing the making up? I am. It always comes back to me. So to prepare, that's meditation, a positive affirmative prayer, all of those things prepare us, this vessel, to be in the space of receiving that beautiful divine idea. And so we get this divine idea. I'm just going to play with it for the time that we have together right now. So when that statement came to me, and the walls come tumbling down, to me, that was a divine idea. Now, so my mind illuminated. I had this idea, and the walls come tumbling down. The second step is I step forward with that in faith, knowing that everything is here for me. Why would I think it's not here for me? You see, if I think it's not here for me, wouldn't that be coming from the past or looking at the future instead of going, why would I think I would be given this beautiful idea without the wherewithal for it to come to fruition? That would be like a teasing God. Anybody ever had an experience of a punitive kind of teasing God? Some people have, and some people have grown up with no concept of God. The thing is, though, do you get how foundational it is when we receive these ideas? Where we're coming from in our own mind about it, any limitations we have of, geez, it's not safe out there. The universe is definitely not conspiring on my behalf to bring me my good. I'm going to stop right there. I've built another wall. But if I just took that idea, wow, cool, awesome, I love it. I, I, I don't question my faith. Faith is moving. I step forward. I said, yes, George, I'll come speak on the 16th and the 23rd. I didn't question it. And the third one is imagination. So I'm moving forward, got faith, yes, all the walls are tumbling down all around me, and I use the power of my imagination, imagining this beautiful world unencumbered by any limitations and lack and againstness and conflict and greed and competitiveness and materialistic whatever stuff. I use my imagination to imagine the world, and my world is freaking awesome. <laughs> it's like, what? Love, 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 love. 
some of us haven't known what love really is because we've been conditioned by love with conditions, which is not love. Because love doesn't choose sides. Love doesn't do anything but love. I'll love you if. I'll love you when. Do you love me? Some people liked my hair short. Some people liked it long. Now it's in between. <laughs> Someone said to me, right, Christine? Your hair was your signature. I said, really? Must have been yours, not mine. I am not my hair. I'm not my hair. I'm not my clothes. I'm not my house. I'm not my car. None of it. It feels so free. Freedom, someone said. Yes! My all-time favorite word, freedom, besides love. <laughs> so I'm using the power of my imagination to imagine all good. So guess what? This is how I use it. If a thought comes in and says, oh, what are they going to do? What are they going to think? What if they don't like me? What if I'm too loud? What if I'm not enough? What? I get to hear what I'm thinking. Nobody's thinking me. I'm thinking. So I get to hear what I'm thinking. And I look at it. I can look at it now so lovingly. Like, oh, you sweet little thing. And then I look at my right hand. I've got a tattoo here that says love with an infinity symbol. I'm like, oh, no accident that I put that there. I was just reminded of that right now. And so then the fourth step, I'm all pure imagination, you know, imagining chocolate and drinking it and all that good stuff. The fourth step is understanding and will. And so here I am. All the walls are falling down in and around me, totally living in faith. It's so great, imagining this beautiful world. And understanding and will are powers that we have. I know that spirit, love, goodness, God stands under everything. That's understanding to me. Stands under everything. And I will gladly and joyfully turn my little will over to my higher self, love. Because in the past, I've messed things up. And that's okay. I use the tool of forgiveness and release and let go and all of that. So when I just chew up with my higher self, willingly turn my will over and say, God's got this. But guys, it's not God's got this out there and I'm just going to go sit over here. I am that. I have to take action from my God self. Hugh, man, we are human beings. Hugh in Sanskrit is light. Man, we're little light beings walking around loving each other. That's my vision for the world. The fifth step is one of the most important, the richest, most powerful step. Discrimination. And I will tell you what that also means. Discrimination, discernment, using good judgment, not judging, doing our forgiveness work. It's here we are, you know, I've got an understanding that God's got it all. You're God, I'm God, we're all God. I turn my will over, I listen to my higher power, I walk out in the world, and I am going to be discerning and discriminating about what I am going to allow into my consciousness. Because you see, we're automatically being lived from our unconscious. Most of us, 90% of the time, are being lived on autopilot from our unconscious subconscious. So I say, why don't we bring it to the light? Bring up all of these beliefs we've been fed or from mass consciousness, all of the things that we've never questioned, Someone comes to me, I shared many examples with Jamie in our, our beautiful talks over the last couple days, you know, when somebody came to me once and said, after the secret came out, oh my God, I, I, I want you to be a speaker about truth and, you know, go out there and just rock the world. And can I take you to lunch? We went to lunch. The first thing she said to me was, first thing we got to do, this was 10 years ago, Got to get bodyguards and stuff because, you know, people are going to want to hurt you. And I looked at her and I go, what? I said, I believe people are inherently good. She goes, oh, I'm sorry. We can't work together. <laughs> and I 
didn't need to say a word. I was smiling at lunch. Thank you for lunch. I was smiling, and I just said, God, you are so good to me. Thank you. I mean, it was so clear. It was just right there. Didn't need to make each other wrong, but it was just like, no, oh, thanks. You know, I'm not going to walk around in the world saying I have to protect myself from the guns and arrows. It might have been true at one time in my life, but it's not anymore. It isn't. I'm not saying that can't happen, but it's really none of my business. It really is none of my business because you know what? That has stopped me from sharing my message of love, which is not my message. It's my experience of God, good, absolute yumminess. And so I would have said, oh, geez, is it too? I, you know how many people wanted to stop me from coming here and to the South, period? I was like, what's wrong with the South? Well, isn't it scary, Christine? I go, why should it be? And they start telling me all the reasons why. And I said, wow, I haven't had that experience. <laughs> I have fun wherever I go. And it could be that that's my favorite F word, and that might be why. But you see, like attracts like, right? And so I'm like, no, thank you. Wherever I go, there I am, and I'm going to have fun. And I'm going to say what God is speaking through me, and I invite you to do the same. Awesome. The sixth one, you see, here we are, illuminated mind, beautiful idea, and I want you to just play with this for a minute. So think of your divine idea. Even if it's one that you got a long time ago and you didn't do it, have something on your mind right now, or do this later, but the invitation is think of something right now that you have a divine idea about. Okay, boom, illuminated mind got this divine idea. Pay attention to how you're feeling and what you're thinking as you step forward in faith and allow the thought or the idea to rise within you so that it can be known and come to your consciousness rather than being, st oh no, don't, don't do that, don't be afraid. Let it come up so that you can see it for what it is. And then imagine that you have been given everything you could ever need and more to handle that which is before you, and this divine idea is for you. So imagine that, and you have this deep understanding as a foundation that all good is here, God is here in and through and as everyone around me. We turn our little s self-will over to big S spirit self the truth of who we are. And we allow any of those thoughts and ideas that once limited us discerning and discriminating and doing our forgiveness work and realizing that a judgment may can't come up. But as this beautiful anonymous person said, the only difference between a weed and a flower is a judgment. The only difference between a weed and a flower is a judgment. Think about that. We are little meaning-making machines, making up so much stuff. Let's make it good. It's time. So we do our discernment process, and we do our forgiveness work, and I forgive myself for ever having judged myself as not enough. I know I always have been doing the best with what I have. I forgive myself for judging my neighbor as being annoying. I know they are always doing the best with what they have. And we move on to wisdom and love. And so you see, we've cleared the vessel, and it's ongoing ongoing process, cleared the vessel of any judgments that come up, any fears that come up, because you see in the face of love, nothing exists, nothing. There's no fear. You can't have fear and love in the same moment. If fear is there, we're not loving ourselves or another. Don't try to push the fear away. Love it. That's all at once. Love me. Okay, so you love it. The wisdom and the love now that we've cleared ourselves from all our 
thoughts that don't serve us anymore. We just live from this beautiful divine wisdom and love. And at the intersection of our heart and mind, and I'm not talking about our intellect here. You can use that as a tool. And you've heard me say this before. Use it as a tool. It's a tool, but it's not the end-all, be-all. Because true knowledge and wisdom comes from the divine, and it doesn't have anything to do necessarily with equations and things like that. Those are helpful. But it's not the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. The intersection of divine wisdom and love is right here. Here's our voice. We're sharing. Because right now we still communicate by words or sign language or body language or things like that. And some of us communicate psychically, and that's all stuff we can do. But we're using words to make them good. And so the last step of the creative process, now that I have been illumined and I have this idea that all the walls have dissolved, I move into a place of the Sabbath. And the Sabbath simply means resting on the mountaintop in peace. Because I know it is already done. So I don't go into, oh my God, how am I going to do this? How am I going to figure it out? How am I going to figure it out? If I'm saying that, and when I, I catch myself saying that, how am I going to figure it out? I'm like, you're not, actually. Get out of the way. You know? Because the question itself stops me from hearing the answer. Because I move into anxiety and fear and worry, which is looking at the future, not being in the present moment. I don't need to know where I'm going next. I need to be where I am in the presence so that peace lives me, and will guide me and direct me to my next step. Does that make sense? And so resting on the mountaintop, and I, I do have, we, we had offered that there's a workshop, you know, after the service, and I have handouts and stuff, and, you know, if you guys have Father's Day plans and you're going, let me know and I'll give you a handout. Um, <laughs> but there is something after the service. Um, if for anybody who wants to stay for that, to look a little bit more deeply into the creative process, do you get that we are living every single moment of our lives, the creative process? That's why I found it so helpful to understand it, so that I know where I am on any of those steps. You see, because pure manifestation happens when we get the idea and we don't even question it because we know it's God, we know it's good, and we just move forward, done. And we have steps if we're not in that place of just believing or having that total faith to help us get unhooked and live in that place of peace on the mountaintop resting in the knowing that all good truly is here for us. Namaste. Wow. Are we blessed? Yes. Are we highly favored? Yes. And so it is. Now is the time that we're going to come together as a spiritual family, and one of the things that we do in this giving and receiving spiritual awareness is um, bring our tithes and offering. And always what we like to say here is that just search your heart, and whatever it is that you'd like to offer to help continue the spiritual family, these wonderful wisdom teachings here at Birmingham, when you come up, the ushers will actually come. Uh, and invite you to come up. If it's not your time to give, please just come and offer a prayer. We do believe that all of our prayers are heard. There's great energy in love, and prayers are always in love. Amen? 
The other thing that I want to share with you as you're doing that, just take that opportunity. Really make this a sacred moment. You know, this is a this is a sacred exchange. You're not just coming to put your donation in here, but you're really pouring into the mission of Unity of Birmingham, and that's to be a loving place where all people can come and grow in their moments, in their nows, in their time, in their path. So I'd like to invite the band to start playing, and they're going to the ushers to come, and for us to all practice this opportunity of worship. Oh, yes, it's behind me. Excellent. It's not on my paper. So let's do this together. As me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive, and my awareness of all that I am. And so it is. Amen. Yes, it's a good day for singing a song And it's a good day for moving along Yes, it's a good day, how could anything go wrong? A good day from morning to night Yes, it's a good day for shining your shoes And it's a good day for losing the blues Everything to gain and nothing to lose Cause it's a good day from morning to night I said to the sun, good morning sun Rise and shine today You know you got to get it going if you're going showing and you know you've got the right of way cause it's a good day for paying your bills and it's a good day for curing your ills so take a deep breath and throw away your pills cause it's a good day from morning to night I said to the sun, good morning shine today you know you've got to get going if you're gonna make a showing and you know you've got the right of way cause it's a good day for paying your bills and it's a good day for curing your ills so take a deep breath and throw away your pills cause it's a good day from morning to night a good day from morning to night Yes, it's a good day from morning to night All right, just a few quick announcements before we um, do the rest of our day today. And of course, Reverend Christine said that she is offering a workshop this afternoon from 1245 to 215 for those who can participate and stay. And for anyone who feels like they have to rush out for lunch, there are lunch sacks that are going to be sold for $4 in the lobby, so you don't have to do all that crazy running around. Um, next week's speaker again will be our beloved Reverend Christine, so make sure that you come back. Also, we are going to have our family cookout on the 23rd from 4.30 to 8. And we need your culinary expertise. So uh, let's see if I can find my, uh, which paper this will be. Okay, so um, if you love to grill, 
sign up and we'll let you, you flip the burger. So if that's you, if you love to do the grill, if you say, that's my job, we need you. And uh, we uh, bring a side dish, a veggie casserole, salad, dessert, everything you can sign out, sign up out there in the lobby. And there's also the email address of where you can sign up and let people know what you're going to be bringing. So plan on the 23rd to join us for our cookout. And let's see, what else is our next? Oh, we have a wonderful opportunity, one of our youth, uh, Sapar Blaine, um, to help her be able to go to the Summer Connection. So if that touches your heart, we need to be able to help her with some funds to help her do that. I know I personally was blessed um, in my youth by people helping me do things along the way. So if that calls to your heart, um, you know, just see Hazel. And uh, Hazel, could you stand up and show your lovely self? This is Hazel. So if that touches your heart and you'd like to participate in that, we'd welcome you to do that as well. Um, And now, I believe, unless there's anything else, oh, one more thing. Um, We are going to, yes, we'll do that. One more final, um, uh, we are looking for a church administrator. And of course, um, you know, you don't ever want to sign up for something if you don't know what's expected for you. So there is a job description uh, that is out in the lobby. So those who would like to know more about that opportunity, please look on the table as well, as well as other um, things that are happening here in our Unity family. At this time, we'd like to, if you are visiting, uh, we'd like to give you a small welcome gift. So raise your hand, if you will, so we can bring you a small welcome gift if you're visiting today. Everybody, round of applause for our visitors. Thank you. And we encourage everyone to invite their friends and family. This is a place that we want to make sure that regardless of where people have been, that they can feel the love here at Unity. And now it's time to, do we have children? No children today? Well, we're all children. So why don't we sing Walking in the Light anyway for ourselves? We are walking as the light, as the light, as the light. We are walking as the light, as the light of God. As the light, 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 as the light of God. Good morning. Um, So I'm the Assistant Youth Director, Jules. Uh, We did not have any kids this morning, but hopefully next week for the cookout. Please invite any children you know, right? (laughs) Um, The Youth Department would love donations of time if you have it. Um, Any old t-shirts, we're trying to do um, paint, and we don't want to mess up anybody's lovely Sunday clothes. And then snacks, if anybody has it in their heart and any time or spare funds. So thank you so much. All right. Yay. So I think, is that it for our official happenings? Okay, so we are going to leave happy and joyful. So just in closing, I want you to know, I hope God blesses you. Have a beautiful Father's Day. And wherever you go, know that you are walking in the light, being the hands and feet of the divine. Amen. One, two, three.